Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. Winter Wild Cards has been nothing short of insane content so far in FIFA 23, but have we peaked in terms of this content with the leaked SBC cards that we have upcoming with the stuff that we're expecting is there going to be a letdown coming with some of this content? I'm not trying to be negative today. I'm not trying to talk bad about this promo because EA deserves some credit for the W promo that they have been putting out with the SBC players, with the cars and packs, with the new objectives, even more new objective content yesterday related to Weekend League, which is a fat W. It's all been good, but is in the next couple of days, is it going to kind of turn downwards? That's what I want to caution you guys about and look through today because this could really impact the market. If the content that is upcoming is not that great, what do we know about the market when stuff like that happens? The market explodes and there's a lot of stuff right now in the market that is going up, but it's for a different reason. But I want to talk about all that in today's video and just kind of maybe take a step back and look at this promo as a whole, but also what to expect today on a Wednesday. Team of the week is not back yet. But we should have another silver star, which is probably where our 16th swap token will be today. Yes, we are at 15 swap tokens. A lot of people are opening their 85 plus player picks. They're opening 85 times 10s in the swaps program. <laughs> Guys, those don't look very good. So we're going to talk about a lot today. So if you're excited for it, hit the thumbs up, subscribe if you're new. Let's continue this conversation at the beginning of the video here. Has Winter Wild Cards peaked? You think about the SBC players that we have had. We've had a great DePaul, a very mid Ozil, an insane. Dimitri Payet with the dynamic image, the price, Fat W. I saw that guy so many times playing in Weekend League yesterday and, and, and over the weekend. Tony Cruz, a bit more expensive, but still a really big W for being 5-star, five 5-star. Five you look at the market right now, and people agree with Payet and with Tony Cruz and DePaul being good value because La Liga and League One cards are just flying, right? That's where the market is going up the most. Now, yesterday we had a Reese Oxford SBC, and this is what I mean like the beginning of the downturn. This card is not bad, right? Of course, EA know they can't release a card like this and make it super expensive. He is coming in right around 36,000 coins, but this is not as big of a name player as some of these other SBCs have been. Tony Cruz, right? Payette, DePaul. And if we take a look and continue to look at some of the leaks that we have, we had a few more yesterday from Foot Sheriff. He said more SBCs added to come during winter wild cards stats expected we have a han striker card another augsburg player which is very interesting 99 physical is cool but the rest of the card looks very mid you have a right back kenny who is english in the bundesliga but just an okay looking card besides pace and then you have a cdm from toronto in, in the mls which that card just looks very decent as well maybe for an mls squad it looks cool right these cards these leaks look cool but they don't look fantastic and it's not a continuation of what we have seen since the beginning of winter wild cards now there are some anomalies in there right we've got this eric by sbc we have silas who has not been posted yet in the game and he was leaked to be a part of winter wild cards but again the, the, this Bellagarde looks okay if those are the stats that he's going to get if he's really really cheap might be a fun card to try i really think this guy could impact the market a lot a french center mid that is in league gun that's an SBC I'm very curious to see when it drops. But like this Fadiga card again, like that. And then even the Oxford, when we saw the leak, I was like, man, that card does not look that great. And besides the Eric Bailly and besides maybe the Bellagarde card, the one that I'm the most excited about is one that we don't even have a name for. FIFA Romania tweeted that uh, last week there was going to be a huge France Winter Wild Card SBC. Like it's an incredible, incredible big name player. We don't even know who this is going to be yet, but Sheriff has not tweeted anything. But besides this, Impending, and the Eric Bailly, guys, I really look at the rest of these cards and I think, how many of these are going to make people go nuts like we already have for the Payette and for the Tony Cruz and the DePaul and stuff like that? That's where my mindset is coming from, that have we seen the peak of the Winter Wild Cards hype with this promo. That's kind of where I'm coming from. So, again, EA could continue their great content with other places in the SBC section, like we had the 86 plus World Cup hero or regular hero upgrade yesterday, which was very, very nice. Of course, we still have the daily like wild card SBCs for the tokens. We got the 85 plus double upgrade that is continuing to come out and is, is very nice. We can do it every day. Get yourself a chance at packing a winter wild card, right? So a lot of the SBC content is a W, but the player SBCs are such a key part of keeping this winter wild cards promo insane. 
I'm just saying be a little bit careful with the hype on these SBCs if they don't look that great. And you know what that means really for the market is what do we know when promos are not that great, right? The market ends up going up a lot in price and that's what the market's been doing today and yesterday starting with that and continuing into today. But it's not for the reason that the promo is not good. It is because we have extra demand. EA dropped a, a message into the game yesterday, and I don't know if you guys saw this or not. If you were on console or the web app, you probably did. EA gifted everybody 1,250 um, champs qualifier points. Basically, everybody in FIFA right now is able to play champs playoffs for a chance to get into the weekend league and that is massive because it really puts a lot of extra gameplay demand for people to go out and buy teams the best teams possible that they can get to get their squad ready to have a chance at playing weekend league right for so many people in fifa that don't either have time enough to play weekend league or it's maybe something that's not something that they're usually used to doing because they maybe don't think they're good enough to play weekend league if you have a wide open door to go and at least try with playoffs, you're going to absolutely go and do it and combine that with some objectives. If you play five foot champs matches, which includes the playoffs, right? I've played one match of playoffs. I won the game. I got the win one objective. You get a player pick in there and you get play five from playoffs. If you win four in playoffs, you get another player pick, right? And then the rest of these are from Foot Champs finals spread over two weeks time. So this is a really big piece of demand for people to play weekend league, right? This is going to make more people try to qualify for Foot Champs and it's going to make more people try to play the weekend league, especially, you know, guys, EA is really, really smart with this, right? It is the holidays. People are maybe on, more people are at home, more people just got the game for Christmas or whatever it may be. So there's a lot of people that are getting onto the game. So EA is saying, hey, Here's a free chance or a free entrance into the best game mode that we have in terms of rewards that people like to play every single weekend. Here you go. Oh, hey, here's some other rewards and objectives. You know, EA is really trying to get people to play the game and they're really pushing for building teams and the meta market. And that is why you see even yesterday content yesterday was a W, right? Like I said, we had the 86 plus um, player pick for the base or the world cup hero. And yeah, it's 55% of voted 45% downvoted because it is a gamble pack, right? And a lot of us, I mean, I was expecting to see some sort of pack like this this week and EA dropped it yesterday. So, you know, it was nice to have something out there to grind for. It's really easy to get fodder right now. Like with all those player picks that are in the store, all the extra packs and stuff like that, it's really easy to get the low tier fodder. And that's, it's still in a lot of demand, which is why it's prices are actually going up. But that's why this stuff is really, really easy to do or seems easier to do right now because that fodder is very easily attainable. Um, and of course, this SBC impacted the market. You saw some card prices drop yesterday. Like one card that I bought and traded with was Rodrigo, World Cup Phenoms because the La Liga hype, right? So yesterday, Rodrigo was 280 highs, right? 283. He went down a little bit after content. He was actually like 269, 265 to 269. So I bought a couple there, sold one at 290. Uh, but that was kind of like the whole market yesterday. There was a slight dip because maybe people had to sell some cards to go out and do the 86 plus. Boom. Look at this graph. Di Natale was 385, went down to 350 and is now going back up. He's back to 380,000 coins. You saw a lot of that on the market yesterday, a slight dip and now a nice rise back because there is game play demand just because I think really because of what EA did yesterday and by putting out that free entrance into the weekend league, so many more people are going to foot champs qualifiers right now and playing the game and buying meta teams to go and try to get that progress and to try to get working towards those rewards. And again, there's extra motivation to do so with those objectives there. So that is what is making the market just continue to go up. I mean, look at Mbappe, 812,000 coins. And this is all fun and it's great and it's it's amazing to trade with. And you're gonna make a lot of coins if you can time the market right this week. The downside to this is when there becomes a panic scenario, and I'm not trying to say this to get you guys scared or anything like that, but if you think about it, if all these people are going out and buying teams, buying cards, spending the coins to get the best team possible so they can go into qualies, 
and then into the foot champs this weekend and to have a best the best competitive opportunity that they can uh, to succeed. There's a lot of people that could potentially panic sell as well if we have a really good SBC dropped that makes people want to change their teams or if we have a bunch of leaks that people are going to see. I mean, we've seen a lot of leaks already for what we imagine will be cards that will be in the second team of winter wild cards, right? We got guys like Benzema. We have guys like uh, the Allen St. Maximin, Veron. Kimmich, um, Robertson, five-star skill moves, those types of player leaks that we have seen, we expect those to be in Team 2. But if we start getting more leaks about who are going to be in Team 2 in the next coming days, maybe compile that with another, maybe the Eric Bailly SBC. I feel like the Eric Bailly SBC will make some waves on the market or whoever that French player that's leaked may be. That could start to make some waves on the market. Again, if a lot of people are buying cards for teams and the market is up, that to me presents a really big opportunity for a potential panic if something drops that would be worth panic selling for or some news drops that would be worth panic selling for in terms of the leaks. So that's kind of where I'm at with the market right now. But until something like that happens, you can see what I've been trading with. Yesterday was an incredible day to make coins. I bought this De Bruyne at 1.1. I bought this Kane at 140. I bought this Holland at 1.06. Um, trading with some of the League One and La Liga cards. I bought both of these, one at 270, one at 289. So not insane, crazy high coin profits, but you know, some solid flips in there. I sold Lacazette too early after buying him at like the right time. Rodrigo, again, there's a 297 sale. And I still have some cards here in my transfer list that I'm trying to flip, but it's just actually with this gameplay demand, it's an incredible time to be fluctuation trading on this game. And if you don't know what that is, check out the pinned video that's on this channel at the very top. Uh, the featured video because in that video we talk through the ins and outs of, of reading a flipping graph knowing what cards are hype and being able to trade with those because you have a lot of gameplay demand right now and that's what people are doing building teams buying cards trying stuff out and linking to uh, all of these popular cards right now in the certain leagues so that's a great way to trade and it's going to continue to be a great way to trade with this demand that is there uh, again, focusing on those League One and the La Liga links. If there's any League One cards that you think are going to end up going higher, of course, we think about that um, English, or not English, the French center mid card uh, that could be leaked or could be dropped at SBC, right? Could that hurt a guy like Ganduzi? Absolutely. Ganduzi was down yesterday. He's back up a little bit now. You get to be very careful with this market. Like we know during winter wild cards, any player SBC could drop and make stuff go lower. But here's the flip side of the coin. If that Eric Bailly SBC comes out, Ganduzi's going to like, I don't even know how high he's going to go because that's, you know, a direct club link. And if Eric Bailly's card looks nuts, what's Ganduzi's max price? A million in coins. Ganduzi would probably be like 200,000 coins if that Eric Bailly comes out just because they're both from the same club. So there's just so much potential for cards to go up, but then also at the same time go down with these player SBCs that are out there. It's so interesting to follow and it's going to be a great market to make coins in, in the next couple of days. Now, speaking of making coins, let's talk about SBC fodder because a lot of people have invested, right? I didn't really go too hard on a club stock. In fact, I only bought a couple cards. Um, and really the best place where the market rose was the low tier. 83s were actually like 1.5K yesterday. 84s were selling at 5,000 coins right around the content drop with the hype of the 86 plus player pick for the heroes. 85s went up. 86s went up for a short amount of time. Now they're back down. Everything else in terms of fodder is low, but it makes sense, right? Because there's no high tier fodder demand. What we need to make 87s and above really go up would be a Jarzinho or a Maldini, those leaked icon SBCs that we have not seen yet. We need something like that or some sort of SBC that requires an 87 plus rated player. And as of right now, there's really nothing out there that's doing that, right? So if you bought fodder and you're holding on to it, that's the play. I would not be panic selling this stuff, even though you can tell, obviously, some people yesterday, that is what they did, right? These guys were about to be, they're about 24,000 coins at content drop. Some people were hoping for a big time SBC or for those icon SBCs. These guys dropped off pretty heavy after that. They're still low at about 22K. Now, if you're wanting to buy these, is it a great time to buy? Personally, I would say no. I would wait for an SBC to drop as a surprise or wait until the weekend again, because I think on the weekend, this stuff is going to get supplied again. And if we don't have a big SBC until then, it's probably just going to stay pretty low. And then you might even be able to get in at a lower price 
on the weekend. But again, it's all up in it in the air what SBCs we're going to get, what player SBCs we could get, and that could of course move the market. So that's what I, that's what I would watch out for in terms of the SBC fodder side of things. But if you have like the 84s or the 85s, like even for 84s, the, these guys that are selling at like four and a half thousand coins, I personally think. I would consider taking the coins before Thursday um, or maybe after the division rivals rewards time period on Thursday, you could see an extra bit of demand. People get rewards. They go out, they complete a couple SBCs. Um, you know, sometimes that happens. Also, sometimes it rewards fodder just drops. So since fodder is up, I would list for lazies like your 84s. I think you can get sales of 5,000 coins. Your 85s, you can sell for like eight and a half K your 83s. You could probably sell at 1.7. That sort of stuff. You can get some lazy sales as there's still demand. The 85 plus double player pick or uh, not player pick, but the 85 plus a double upgrade is going to come back today. That's something you can do every single day. And that's what an 80, 86 rated player and like an 84 squad. So people are going to be using 84s again today for that. L lazy list your, co your fodder cards on that low tier end because they should get sales before Friday, but I would get out of it before Friday for sure, before more supply comes onto the market. Now let's talk today on Wednesday just for a little bit. What to expect today, right? We of course will be hoping to see another objective um, wild card swaps card. Now hoping to see, I mean, it's just where I expect to see it. Last week on Wednesday, we had the Anthony Robinson Silver Stars card uh, that was, you had to win three, score eight and assist six. So get your silver teams ready Again, I feel like there's a really high potential they'll put the token inside of here since, again, for this week, they put the token in the first owner fiesta. So that's where yesterday's token was. Token number 15 yesterday uh, inside of this objective. So watch out for your silver cards again today. That'll be a great place to trade as people are motivated to go and use silver squads once again in the silver game mode. So watch out for that. Speaking of the token tracker, just to show you guys, uh, we are on token number 15. I do not believe there are any that are expiring today on the 27th. The The next one is the Silver Stars. Well, the Silver Stars objective. Sorry, today's the 28th, not 27th. But this is going away today, of course, as the new Silver Stars comes in. So if you haven't got that done, make sure you go ahead and get that one in. And then, of course, you'd think that today would be token number 16, maybe 17 if EA are feeling super duper nice, which puts us on track, if you think about it, to be very close to the 20th swap token, I, I would imagine that we will be able to get 20 swap tokens by the time Friday comes around. So if you're looking for the 83 times 25, um, time, or the 83 times 75, that is the 83 times 25 times three, that is 20 wildcard tokens. I think you're going to be able to claim that this Friday, I would imagine. So it's we on 16 today on Wednesday, maybe 17. Hopefully in the next couple of days, they release more than just one token a day probably get the 20 tokens on Friday so that we can open this. A lot of people have been opening this 85 plus winter wild cards player pick. Guys, I'm telling you, you have a couple odd ones that get a Ferlin Mendy or maybe somebody like a Felix, but most of these are abysmal, right? These have not been good. And even a couple of the 85 times tens that I've seen have not been good as well. And this is the one that I'm looking forward to doing, right? I'm just a couple tokens away. I'm actually two tokens away from getting this done. And I'm looking forward to doing this. I, I really want to open this pack and take the risk before the best of cards go away. Because if you think about it, with the best of that is in packs right now, I don't know how long this is going to be out. This is one of the biggest things right now that we need clarification on. This best of, winter best of with the Messi, Mbappe, Leal. We need a list of players, EA Sports, and we need to know how long these guys are in packs. I would imagine they're not in packs past Friday. I really wouldn't because a best of is rarely in packs for more than like a couple weeks, unless it's like footies at the end of the year and it's like two weeks long. So I don't know. We just need some uh, communication, EA Sports. That would be great. Uh, I don't know why they haven't told us that yet or even shown us a list, but... That's what we need help on right now is some info on that. But that's why I would like to open an 85 times 10 before Friday, just because I feel like these guys might go out of packs. So just keep that in mind when you're thinking about opening packs and stuff like that. Um, and, you know, some a lot of the conversation recently has been, hey, should I save packs? Is it worth doing this? Is it worth saving packs right now? And, you know, just to speak on this for a second, I'm I'm not a huge fan of saving packs. Um, unless it's like the week before a promo and the content is an L or like before team of the year, they usually drop that like pre team of the year warm up series where you can, uh, walk out. Okay. This is not bad. Brazil center back. Who's this Marquinhos. We take those. 
But like when there's a promo that's specifically for saving packs for like the next promo, that's fine. You know, save packs then. But um, the rest of the time, like just rip them, right? Especially if they're tradable packs. You know, I, I don't feel like it's worth saving the tradable packs that long just because the time value for coins, if especially if you're going to try to trade and invest and make some coins off of that, you'll be way better off um, just opening the packs as you go now if you want to save big packs like an 84 times 20 then absolutely go for it but that's just kind of my thoughts on saving packs i like to open uh but again if your whole idea is like i'm gonna save packs for team of the year then heck yeah go for it right and then i mean i understand the feeling of packing a team of the year is like top one so i completely get that we have a 50k pack here tradable this is from that uh christmas cheer sbc it looks like we're getting a board in brazil again goalkeeper that's a walkout in ederson all right so the fodder and the packway has been very nice to me recently all right i mean no specials in that one but guys i mean i don't know if you saw the twitter post yesterday but i did the 86 plus world cup player pick and i got for lawn now disregard the red card this was a crazy weird situation it happened I, I i i pressed the clear button and the guy slide tackles anyway uh, this is who I got yesterday from the 86 plus and cool was the other pick in it both world cup So that was nuts. So now I have Rafael Leal on the bench and this Mbappe on the bench the pack weight in the red list recently has been Ridiculous, I'm gonna do Tony Cruz probably slot him in for either Wijnaldum or Kessie haven't figured out which one yet that I will replace there uh, But I'm really excited for that Tony Cruz card and the squad is I absolutely love the squad man These two guys I can't wait to get used to using for a line a lot more but two go two games and three goals is, is really really nice there so um i'm gonna do more player picks this week as well just i mean if the red list is hitting for me then i'm gonna try to take advantage of it and snag one of these big boy winter wild cards as, if possible and that's another one of the reasons why i'm still aiming for my 85 times 10 this week so i'm gonna keep grinding the menus i'm gonna keep working on getting those player picks getting the gameplays stuff done and of course getting all the winter wild card swap tokens two more is all i need before i can get up to the 15 threshold for the 85 times 10 really quick last thing i went into the store on accident here uh that's where i want to go but not there um i want to show you guys the store they released that 500,000 coin pack again yesterday which is not really a surprise we thought it was going to happen but this also makes me wonder if they are going to release another one of the store packs today for like you know a one day type of time period maybe the 300k pack comes back today so watch the store they've been running lightning rounds they ran tradable lightning rounds yesterday that also did not help the fodder situation that made fodder go a little bit lower because they're running the tradable 50k and 100k pack lightning rounds so just keep an eye on the store again today but the 500k pack was back it's a scam as well guys i mean it's not worth it at all in my opinion i know you get a lot of players in it but it's just not worth it whatsoever so that's a bit of a bummer but hopefully today on wednesday ea spikes it up a little bit maybe drop some sort of gamble pack again i feel like we have 85 double so they might not but surprise us today ea sports prove me wrong and tell me that there is not going to be a drop off in the hype of winter wild cards but the way it seems that might be where we're headed. So we'll just have to see. And of course, stay tuned to Twitter for maybe some leaks and stuff like that. It's been a while since we've had like some concrete like hype leaks. So maybe that's coming soon again. I'll stop talking and let you get on with your Wednesdays. If you guys enjoyed the video, smash the thumbs up on it, comment down below if you have any questions and subscribe if you're new. It's been Nate Foot Account and I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.